to the Park and Rec Advisory Board. Um, and we please have a roll call. Brandon. Here. Brenda. Present. Melissa. Here. Patricia. Here. Sean. Here. Matt. Here. Okay, next is the approval of the meeting minutes. Do I have a motion for approval of the meeting minutes? I approve them. Second? I second them. Any questions or comments? Okay, all those in favor say yes. 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 All those opposed say no. The minutes are approved. Okay, any public comments? You got anything to say, Ben? <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I usually do, but. <laughs> Um, okay, so the first thing is the outdoor recreation plan steering committee discussion. Okay, yeah, we'll take over here. Um, we'll get things popped up. You guys do have a copy of the presentation in front of you and then a couple of materials that will reference as well in terms of the community profile and open house summary. Um, but if we go to the, oh, I've got the. There we go. That's right. I have a keyboard. Um, for our agenda today, we'll go around and do. I know you guys did roll call, but we'll do my my icebreaker with the introduction, um, and then um, what we've been up to in terms of um, work since we last got together. Then we'll dive a little deeper into some of the plan requirements and, and talk about kind of the next phase of the process and the analysis of what needs to be done there and have a little conversation about that and then workshop with all of you on key themes and goals before we wrap up with next steps. As always, please interrupt throughout. Let's have a discussion, ask questions, all those kinds of things as we go through. But let's start with introductions and what you're looking forward to do getting outside this spring since there's not so much snow on the ground uh, anymore. So uh, for me, Stephanie, uh, usually for me, it's getting out and grooming the horses and getting rid of all of their winter hair is always fun. But my almost one and a half year old is walking and all the things and we need to get a pair of rain boots. But we had them outside yesterday just splashing in the puddles. So I... They're very messy and very excited for that. <laughs> Amy, and I wish I had horses to groom, but I guess I'll settle for cleaning up the garden instead. <laughs> Sean Allen, City Council, and I look forward to walking around and biking more and uh, getting out and doing nature more. My name is Matt Jankwart, and similar to Sean, and I also like to fish on the team, so the river comes down. That's good. I'm Brenda Gulpi and I just like being outside. There's a question. Who you are, who like to go to town? Oh. Uh, Mike Stifter, and uh, I just came from uh, looking at a uh, stormwater pond that was uh, overflowing uh, near <laughs> nearly someone's house, but we were okay. So, But I do like splashing in pools. <laughs> <laughs> They're everywhere. They're everywhere. Uh, Melissa Padrini and I have three little kids and we really enjoy, we live right by the trail system and the kids love to do hikes down by the river and we've just got a, a dog, she's a puppy, so she's looking forward to taking her down there. I'm Brenda, the recreation assistant, and I'm looking forward to a landscaping project because we spent two years removing all of our rocks. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Patricia LaRue, I'm chair of the park board and on the plan commission and what I love about the spring is walking around Lake George and you get to see those little baby chicks from the docks and they are so cute and you watch them following and then you see you see mama and maybe three babies on this side of a tree. And this little guy's just like trying to try and finally they get on the truck. Finally, they oh my God, that one's safe. But uh, just, I can spend hours doing that. <laughs> uh, Brandon Doberton, uh, Park Board. Uh, I guess I'm not looking forward to anything myself, but uh, my dogs really <laughs> like the warm weather. So I guess I'm looking forward to seeing them happy again. <laughs> Uh, Kendra Eleanor Planner. Um, I'm excited to get to know what Wisconsin has to offer for spring. So, all these things. Cindy Danke, Recreation Manager, and I'm just looking forward to getting outside and seeing people happy, which we clearly did today. All along, people walking by, somebody with a yellow 
shopping cart, three boys. I don't know where they got it from. But <laughs> so, <yeah. laughs> don't ask, don't tell. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. So then to jump into what we've been up to here, it's really kind of a focus in three areas and we'll spend some time highlighting a little bit um, of each, but in turn, um, focusing on public engagement, our facility, facility inventory, and then the community profile and projection. So we'll talk about each of these three, but before I jump in, wanted to give you guys a quick highlight um, on the other plans as well. Um, so just we're trying to make sure that through this process, even if we're not having a meeting each month with the different steering committees, that you're getting an update on that overall activity that's happening um, across all of. Um, Can I ask, are you are these in something you've given to us? Yes, the one with the three slides. Do you have it or not? Yes. Um, okay, this one. All right. Yes. Okay, got it. Um, Thank you. Yes. Perfect. Um, so in terms of the bike and pedestrian plan update, um, they are kind of in a little different of a spot in terms of uh, they, they're working and finalizing their data collection, but they've already started working through their goals. So they started a little, in a little different of a process there. We're going to start talking about our goals here today, um, but they had goals that were drafted and crafted together that we could talk about at the open house. And they are getting ready for some um, walking and biking tours here in the near term here. I'm forgetting exactly the date now. Ahead, but we can make sure to get you with that information um, and kind of ironing things out from that perspective. But um, then from the comprehensive plan um, update as well, um, actively engaging that steering committee as well. We did chat through the community profile with them at their last meeting. And so the updates to that um, are we'll chat through those as well and then we'll they have a meeting next week where we'll be going through kind of a similar agenda with them reviewing the um, results of our early input um, and then talking about the goals and key things for the overall conference plan but so then what have we been up to in terms of public engagement so of course we have the engage rf site which launched at the end of January. Now my dates are going to, I should have written the dates down. Um, it started at the end of January, early February. We have almost 300 users that have created an account with an Engage RF. So if you haven't done that, make sure that you, you do that. Obviously, there are a lot more than 300 people that are members of the River Falls community. So get your friends and neighbors to create an account there. Um, We've had some initial engagement there. We also have the sur a survey open um, on Engage RF right now that'll close. On, yes, yep, it'll close. It's set to close on Friday. So you've got a couple days left um, to get in there. There's some really similar things to what we'll talk about in terms of our summary from the open house. But then we also had the open house on February 24th, uh, which was a great event. It was too bad that it was a, a snowy day. Um, <laughs> We thought it was going to be a long time to stand and be down in the library, but it went by super quick. It was really good traffic. We had over 100 people um, come and chat with us. I was checking my watch. Some people were spending close to an hour, um, you know, participating in the activities, engaging um, with their fellow community members. So that was really great to see. Um, I think we just maybe missed some people that decided to go home from work when it was snowing rather than come to the library, but it was still great to have the conversations that we we did. And of course, hopefully those that weren't able to join us could connect to that survey. One of the well. things we talked about down there is that actually the effort that people did make to come down there. So you figure you're working, you've got two kids, mm -hmm. you come home, you have dinner, it's crappy outside, and yet you bundle the kids up, you put them in the car, and you come down so and the older people there we had a lot of older people and i'm like i can really appreciate that they didn't just say well i'm going to stay home mm -hmm. so i i think 100 people is really good yeah when you figure 300 people are registered so that's a third of the people mm -hmm. registered so yeah yeah no i thought that was good and um i was kicking myself personally because usually we bring coloring books and you know and the chance that there's kids you don't always get kids at open houses and we did um so we got out 
our crayons and or our, some markers and some blank paper. But um, so yeah, it was good to, a good cross section um, of the community from that standpoint. We did have a few. Um, I know for sure some um, students from the university show up as well. So some good good components there. But what we have in front of you tonight is kind of the draft early summary from the open house results. Um, we're not going to go through everything here, but what you have in front of you is all of the um, stations, all of the results from the stations in a summary format is the, the document with the word, the word cloud on front. Um, we will be updating this with the results from the survey. The survey questions are, are similar in nature, and so we'll be combining everything together into one summary. Um, so that's where this will get, get added, but right now it's just the results from the open house. Um, so um, just to kind of hit on the open house, of course, like we're doing with everything, trying to, um, when we're getting out and engaging, hitting on all three planning elements, obviously the comprehensive plan talks a lot of, has quite a few more topics that it covers versus the other two plans. Um, so the results here get into utilities and housing and transportation, um, but also the, I think the last couple of pages are are more on the recreation side of things. The one thing I will note here too, as you're looking in this, this is meant to be a summary, not the full. So we haven't included every single comment um, that's come out. This is intended to, to give you the, the high level overview, but we obviously have all of the individual comments provided. If you cared to look through all of the minutia, you'd be, we'd be more than happy to share it with you, but it's a lot of information um, from that standpoint. So, um, but did want to highlight a couple of things that are particular to, um, for us here, talking about the outdoor recreation plan. Um, and so to start out, we had some, um, some general questions about what can we be proud of in River Falls? What are some concerns and issues and what do we see for a vision? These are things and topics that apply to all three of the plans. They will be really helpful in the comprehensive plan when we're laying out the vision, but you'll notice in here that especially with um, this first question, our parks, our natural resources, are, we're really highlighted as things that can be proud of in the community. So this is a word cloud. It's just a nice visual version of the bigger the word, the more times it appeared in the responses when we just look at actually what was written down on a post-it note. So everybody that came through could write as many things down on a post-it note as they wanted to in terms of what they were proud of. But when we go to the next page um, of the summary, we went through and pulled some themes out of the specific results um, and, and ranked them. Um, you know, some were tied to have the same number of appearances and things like that. So one thing I will note here, parks was the number one response of things that people are proud of in River Falls. And that doesn't include when they, um, some recreation components or the natural resources, which in some cases you could combine um, all of that together. So from the recreation standpoint is more where we're like the use of trails and some of those components um, and the natural resources again being some of the, the spaces that are within our parks. Um, so just going to show that importance of what we're all talking about here was really echoed in this overall sense of what the community can be proud of. But some other things that showed up here were um, sustainability and the focus and investment on renewable and clean energy within the community. Um, our social environment and quality of life being that welcoming, friendly community, that it's a safe um, community with that's open for all. Some great comments there. Um, oh. <laughs> Dealing with water. Sure, yeah. <laughs> um, and then we've got some of the other things that popped up. Education, of course, our great school systems from a public, public school to post-secondary. Um, we've got some great businesses. The downtown was highlighted a fair amount um, throughout that we have an engaged community that wants to work together. Um, so that was highlighted through responses, the identity of the community, that there is a desire to grow. Um, so just a few different things and components there and kind of how it all came together. So anything um, in this high level summary that anybody's surprised to see? I'm maybe? just surprised that safety, when something had to do with safety, <clears throat> first of all, were there any 
significant? And if so, what, under what category would they be put? Like if you're proud of your police department, are you proud of your, or was that not? There weren't any from the, from like an emergency services standpoint, other than noting a safe and welcoming community. And those were, okay. were grouped between the social environment and quality of life. Okay. Yeah. Can I ask about the growth? Yeah. Because I remember last meeting, like the, the number of, the number of miles had not grown at all. It kind of declined in the growth rate. I was well, just wondering. And I did happen to check on the nominee because we were talking about how the growth rate was so low yeah. from the 2010. Um, and they too only had, they had a very small, because they also are- This was the census. Yeah, that was the census. And there was, um, they're also a 15,000 person community. They also <laughs> have a university and they also were very low where Hudson was. And Hudson was kind of- So I wonder if that has anything to do with the university. Well, that and I used to be a census taker and it's where you are living at the time. So Even if you're at your mom's house because she's sick, but you plan on being there for it, you're counted as living at your mom's house. Okay, so I wonder if it was just the pandemic. But, yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we do have an eight percent growth rate for the city, mm -hmm. which is lower than the past mm -hmm. two decades, right? But higher than the majority of Wisconsin. So Wisconsin's overall growth rate for the twenty twenty census was okay. eight point six, and for the country it was seven point four. Oh, okay. So that's so we're doing pretty good compared to other mm -hmm. okay areas. Yeah. Yeah. and we'll get into that that data is in the other document, but just from a the city itself had a higher growth rate than either of the counties that we are a part of as well, holistically. Okay. So um, when it comes to growth, what do you can you characterize is the community, do you sense the community wants like a growth in size, more people, or is it I want more growth in some of these options like ice rinks and these kind of things? You know, because my sometimes concern is it, there's this growth thing that some of these great things that people like about the small boss. Yes, and I think you'll see growth. We're, we're not going to go through all of the comments here, but you'll see growth appear in a few different ways um, throughout the questions that came up. And so there are some that said we had an option on our land use question or we don't want to see any growth at all. Some people did identify that as we don't want to you know, change anything. So I think there's I don't know that we have a confirmed sense, but I think no, realizing here that growth um, was lower on the list than our quality of life and social environment. There are some you know, balances of things that come in there, but when we talk later about opportunities for economic growth, there is, that is the one area that I would say for sure that at, the, at least at this stage, we're seeing there's a desire to be more growth and opportunity, um, but we haven't gotten to the point of whether that means growth, outward growth, or redevelopment, and kind of you know staying within our that. Yeah. It's one of the key things for us to dig into is yeah. the council and yeah. know where we're headed. Yeah. yeah. Any other comments or questions on this one? Okay. And. To flip, um, the next the next question was a concern or issue for the future of the community. Um, and of course, you know, same thing here. You can see big words, affordable and housing and water. We do see bike and sidewalks show up, but you don't see the parks, the natural resources and recreation um, popping up as much here. Um, but one of the big things that did come out, and you can kind of combine a couple of those words together, is the sidewalk and trail infrastructure in terms of increasing safety, being more connected, having more options. That showed up as a, in a few different uh, ways throughout um, housing. Um, and this was a big variety um, in terms of what people wanted. Some people, even it was hard to say that people want a reduction in our R1 zoning or kind of the, the base of zoning category, but then somebody else wants less multifamily. So totally contradicting uh, each other. So that's getting to that growth component of there is a, a mixture there, but overall some good things in terms of wanting to make sure that we're maintaining properties, protection for 
renters being affordable and safe. Um, some of those things, a good chunk on nature and sustainability. There were some pretty loud voices at the open house um, related to the dams and, and Lake George and all of that activity. Their um, business and economy popping up um, with more things to do, lack of high paying jobs, maintaining economic diversity, some of those things. Roadway and transit. Um, transit does pop up later in the discussion as well, but making um, then our downtown, making sure we maintain and enhance the downtown, but without losing our character. So again, getting to that growth comment there maintaining our infrastructure. Parks and recreation does show up down here at the, the very bottom, but really looking for more. It's not anything that we're concerned about what we have, it's wanting more. Uh, what more can we get out? And I thought a lot of it is on the indoor recreation component of things, maintaining safety, providing for diversity, accessibility and inclusion, and then growth as well. So any thoughts or comments, questions, surprises? from the issues and opportunities. It's uh, good to see that, you know, the community recognizes the importance of having clean water. Um, mm -hmm. And that certainly reflects the values of it. Definitely. Yeah, where I was looking for safety as being something we're proud of is a concern. I'm like, I, I don't feel that, but maybe they just don't know. Right. And part of it is, you know, not necessarily saying that we're unsafe now, but we need to maintain. We, we want change to occur, but we need to make sure that we're keeping safety on top of mind as well. Okay. Um, then the next question that we'll go through is what is your vision? And I just highlighted these because, again, I think they're important for thinking about the overall goals. So this activity, we had a kind of a Mad Libs exercise. We created some vision statements and asked people to, to fill in the blank um, here. And so if you really, this is the one piece where we did include all of them because we think, I thought there was some kind of fun thing. So the back of your document, there are all of the individual comments and which um, I took it from oh, yeah. <laughs> just so I had a copy. I am not following <laughs> here. Um, That's okay. <laughs> um, so if you want to see all of the individual comments, we did provide them here. But there were nine themes that kind of popped out um, across the, the different topics. So we've got, um, and what's summarized here, I just pulled one. We pulled one example statement. Um, we won't read through all of them, but um, for this first one, they were asked to fill in the blank. In 2040, River Falls will be a community that is known for an adjective and then a noun, so from that Mad Lib style. So we did hear about um, development being intentional with our growth. Um, smart growth, I think, was another option. Um, downtown was highlighted in a few vision statements, keeping that vibrant and maintaining a vibrant downtown. Um, economic development identified in a few different ways. Our neighborhoods, particularly whether that was kind of the sense of community or a focus on housing from that perspective. Recreation uh, popping up there. I think that was a good statement of we'll be known for our first class outdoor recreation. Um, our resources as well, from our, primarily from a natural resources perspective. So this one was preserving natural space. Um, social, being an inclusive environment, a lot of um, statements around inclusivity, accessibility, um, things like that. Sustainability popping up here again in the vision, um, being known for sustainable living, and then utilities, clean drinking water popping up there again. So um, again, all of the, this is just a, an exercise for us to try to pull those themes and see what people focus on in terms of where where their mind is when we're thinking about the future of our fall. So it's nice to see these themes pop up and really echo some of the things that we're proud of um, in that first question as well. And maybe before I pause for questions, I'll jump to the next one. So they do have, did have two fill in the blank statements that they could provide. And this one was in the future, River Falls will celebrate blank by investing in its blank. Um, and so we had some similar things pop up here, like resources and recreation, housing and neighborhoods, economic development. Um, but here there was also a focus on some of our amenities. 
um, whether those be public amenities that are provided by the city, be it the library or community spaces or some of the public or private amenities. Um, some other things like our, our people, investments in our people, um, engagement popped up as things we can be proud of, the identity of the community, and then sustainability popping up again. So um, any thoughts, comments, surprises, confirmations across those two vision statement summaries? Affordable housing is a, a, a reoccurring theme too, mm -hmm. which is good to see. Yeah. Okay. And I know this is a lot to digest, so we're, we're throwing a lot at you here. But um, for the paper copy I have in front of you, I'm going to skip a lot of stuff that's in here. Feel free to go peruse at your own time. But it gets into our housing activities, our um, what types of growth would we like to see resources. If you jump all the way to page 23, of the summary, we get to our specific questions for the other recreation plan. Um, so again, what we're trying to aim to do here was understand um, how people are currently recreating in the community and what they'd like to see from a high level. No answer was a bad answer. Um, things like that to help us understand where we want to be going. So the first question um, was, what are your favorite outdoor recreation? activities. Um, so we've got kind of the, the top responses here where at least two people responded and these do go in order. So, you know, walking and hiking kind of you know, the same accord there, but biking. Um, so some good synergy with our uh, bike and pedestrian plan. Kayaking um, really emerging there and there were throughout a couple of other spots notation of um, kayak access points um, and boat launches, that type of thing showing up in a few other areas, but swimming, cross-country skiing, um, baseball being the one specific sport that popped up throughout. Gardening was like nice to see, snowshoeing. Microsoft doesn't have, that was the only icon that they didn't have was snowshoeing, so I picked a snowflake. <laughs> um, running, popping up there again, and uh, fishing. So um, there are a few other uh, um, activities where we just had one uh, one person um, identify from my favorite horseback riding to photography, bird watching, um, and things of that nature. We also pulled out some of the favorite places that people identified when they were talking about um, their favorite recreation activities. So some different um, things pulled out here, but you can kind of see what some of those Top places are, um, I would note Glen Park and Hoffman Park, probably of no surprise, you know, popped up here, but we're also very common themes in what people are proud of um, in the community. They all got put under the parks bucket, um, but just to make notation of that. So I don't think there's anything earth shattering here, probably a good confirmation of, of what people are liking to see. Um, but then the next question um, was, what outdoor recreation activities do you wish were available in River Falls that aren't currently available? This was, was again, an open-ended question. So there was nothing, it wasn't, um, you know, circle, you know, pick all that apply, it was open-ended. So we did combine some things together. The pool emergence is really on more, on either being an indoor pool or having a zero depth pool. It was, I think there was maybe one or two times where somebody said pool, but otherwise there were some specific and pool amenities that um, kind of hit to those eight. The nature preserve or nature center or really just more access at to access to nature to engage with nature, some of those things. Ice skating with some kind of that skating component, ice rink popping up a few times. Skiing more on the that's water skiing, right? Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes they didn't differentiate cross country yeah. skiing, so we don't want to assume, you know. Um, the skate park popping up here, our trails, you know, there's some more specifics. Obviously, there are trails, but more destinations and locations for water recreation. Here's that boat and kayak launch, and then mini golf. Um, people came up with mini golf as well. And then there's some other activities on your um, summary that were popped up where we only had um, one response um, as well. But a thing emerging there um, 
that I think pops up later as well as some of that event center or you know places to gather and hold events also popping up as well. And then um, the last one again, this was open ended, so people could comment as they saw fit was what improvements or investments are needed to improve or diversify <laughs> outdoor recreation. Um, so we've got you know some of the responses up here. There's some more detail provided in your summary. Um, but again, that sidewalks and trails component of increasing connectivity, safety, and maintenance. I will note there are some specific questions that you can read in here too for the bike and pedestrian plan about what would get you to walk or bike more, make more as a form of transportation and where are you walking and biking too. Those are very common themes that popped up through those responses um, as well. Um, but our natural resources there, there was um, opportunities for enhancing natural resources, again, getting back to the some of the, the Lake George, Lake Louise comments, um, and then improving the opportunities to connect um, and interact, even some comments about educational opportunities um, in terms of our natural resources. An improved pool, again, um, whether that's improvements to the existing pool, an indoor pool, all the things there. Um, accessibility popping up a few times and making sure that we have facilities that are accessible to all that is a requirement of the DNR's plan as well as looking at accessibility. But some other things, the bike routes connecting regionally to other communities, there was notation of that people drive elsewhere because they have a more connected system, mainly on the trail network component but um, some facilities and park amenities and, and those kinds of things. So some good kind of insight, again, some things that are probably not surprising um, to see, but it is interesting to see what's highlighted from people as well. So any thoughts or comments on those three that I went through? Yeah. Well, <clears throat> I know a reoccurring thing we've seen throughout the year too is there are items, I mean, if you were to ask, I'm sure that you'd probably hear lots of people saying, that the splash plan in Gent Lynn Park would have the rate would be up the rough if you were to actually get the number on just talking with everybody. In the sure. And you know, um, there's other items like that, whether it's disc golf. I know the ice rink's remarkably popular. We didn't get a chance to do it, and I know people would, you know, go, they missed out on it. So we want to yeah. make sure we can get that for them too. So, but those numbers, yeah, I know if we, if we were to ask, uh, go around and ask people individually, they'd be off the charts on some of the stuff we've done, okay. especially the splash pad. Everyone's like, oh, And just to, to highlight there too, again, we've got draft stamped all over this, but we will have another version of this that comes out once the survey closes so you can see everything combined together as one there. So, and I will make my last plug to make sure your friends and neighbors go connect to Engage RF and take that survey before. When is it due or when is it deadline? Friday. Friday. And they should engage or they should get connected to it because there's gonna be lots of more fun stuff coming out on it too. So like right. electing a pet mayor. So <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so then we will move into our community profile and projections piece here. I'm gonna go kind of quickly through this, but you do have the um, the community profile, that's the one with the yellow logo. Um, um, that, one? that one I have. Okay. So this is this document is meant to provide our baseline of information that we're calling to understand the community. It is not all of the information that we will be using in these processes. So it's just a starting point. There's lots of things that we will grow and expand upon as we're doing the analysis. Things that we learned are more important for here. We'll be you know, pulling more data. So you can take a look at this, um, but wanted to just highlight a couple of things that we look at throughout. Again, we wanted to make sure we were hitting on all components of the planning, <clears throat> planning process, but here looking at our demographics. So yes, we did. If you look, this is River Falls um, population change from 1990 to the 2020 census. Um, we had some pretty big growth from 90 to 2000 and 2000 to 2010 at nearly 20 percent. That slowed um, between 2010 and 2020, but whether that was there's some census counting components, but we were also, if you think about 
this is recovering from the Great Recession. And some of those things, there's some changes that have happened. And so that's not uncommon. Um, but this document does do some comparison to surrounding communities, the county, um, things like that in terms of growth. Uh, we also look at some of the subsets uh, of the population as well. So this is a, a population pyramid that looks at our percentage of the population that are males by age group in blue and females in green on the right hand side with our under five at the bottom and 85 and over at the top. So looking at how those the age breaks out um, across the community, um, probably have not a ton of surprise with um, University of Wisconsin River Falls that our 20 to 24 population is that large, those large components there um, with students, but also our 15 to 19 doing well. I think it's it's also interesting to see there are lots of communities where our baby boomers, you can just see where those baby boomers are moving. As you look at population projections, you don't see a huge emergence of them here in River Falls, which is an interesting, you know, whether the student population is having some effect on that but the one thing that we the easy way for us to look at this is if it's a if it looks like a triangle which you kind of say it does that's a growing population where we have larger groups on the, the bottom that are our child bearing or, or children age um, and growth here and it's happening there of course birth is only one way that our population grows it also can grow from um, migration so um then we also look at things like um, economics. So there's some factors in there with our um, employment. Here we're looking at our median household income. So that's how much your household makes you, your spouse, your children, your parents um, versus your per capita income. So that income for every individual across the community and how that compares um, to the county, the state and the country. Um, looking at some housing conditions how much are we are owner occupied renter occupied people per household some different characteristics there and then also concluding with projections so one thing that's important to this overall planning process is thinking about not who we are today but who we're going to be into the future and so we um, did an exercise of looking at what where could we be growing and i want to pause here for um, a little bit because this is important for the outdoor recreation plan because part of our analysis that we'll talk about does get into using that future population to say what we need from a recreational standpoint. Um, and so we looked at a few different trends um, to, to come up with a future number of what our population would be. The um, Department of Administration does come out with growth projections for every municipality in Wisconsin. They used to do them more regularly. They haven't updated them since 2015, which is you know, not so great for anybody that wants to use that data. The interesting part is that their 2020 population projection for River Falls that they developed in 2013 was off by only seven people. Whoever had the crystal ball, <laughs> crazy. Um, but when we looked at a lot of the surrounding communities, they were pretty far off, particularly the counties had some pretty big swings in those projections. Um, but so the, the um, blue line at the bottom to get us to a population of 18,000 in 2045 is that DOA projection. So if you, you look in, at kind of that trend line, we see growth occurring to, there's still growth overall, but it's slowing a fair amount. Um, once we get past 2030, that, that line starts to kind of taper and even out. Um, now, when we're looking at these projections, we want to plan for growth. So we have the tools in place should that growth occur. We, unless we thought that no, absolutely no growth was going to occur, but this allows us to make sure that we are at least thinking about what future recreation facilities we would need. There would obviously be thought before we make the investment of adding a new park or building a new pool. Um, but from the comprehensive plan side, we also want to make sure that we have a future land use plan that allows us to, to manage growth and change if it comes in. It doesn't necessarily, there's nothing saying that we have to meet these goals overall. Um, so we ran a couple of different scenarios um, and looked at a few different ways, but as we looked at everything that we ran together, we kind of came back to those growth rates that we have experienced over the last 20 years and applied those to our 2020 population to kind of see how things shook out there. Um, and what seemed to really work in our conversations, and we chatted about this with the Comprehensive Plan Steering Committee, 
is that that population projection of 22,513 by 2045 seems to make sense. Um, there's data within here as well that gets back to um, recent housing growth that we've experienced in the community, what the housing study had projected out for housing growth by 2030, um, and then you know making some assumptions on that household size, if that would be maintained into the future, that we would kind of stay on trend with where we're at right now into 2045. Obviously, that's 20 years from now, there's going to be change that happens. I doubt very highly that in 2045, I'm going to come back and say, wow, city got it right. But at least we've got the tool in place. Um, so that was a lot of talking I just did. But any questions on? I, I, I hate that I'm always putting my hand up. But this housing part, where did those num numbers see? Where did those numbers come from? That word, 74% are owner-occupied. That's what I was going to say. That, one, that, that one's from the census. Oh, that's from the census. Yeah, the 2019 census. Okay, because the utilities will say that we're 50% renters. So what's, how, what's the disconnect? Yeah, so part of that comes from just where we're grabbing the data from and confirming some of those um, things, I think, from... That one, it's um, it's that's just what how the census projected it out. So it's maybe not the best okay. source. Um, there are some we did look at some differences in the. Oh yeah, okay. Amy, I, Amy's my helper here. Oh, there you go. I pulled this from a previous presentation and forgot to update it. So if you look at page twenty one of the um, community profile, we did get that updated. Okay, so I was, yes. So thank you for pointing that out. Um, so we were at 50.9% owner occupied and 49.1% owner occupied. And, and that, that was that does see. come from the Maxfield Housing Study. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. I messed up. <laughs> I think that was. Okay. I think that's what originally yeah. that from census. Yeah. yeah. So, but we did update that because I didn't okay. feel right. So I just didn't update my presentation. My apologies. I thought it was well, you're not gonna be no. You're not gonna get recommended for that. <laughs> <laughs> so that's your job, don't worry. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna keep us moving then. Um, so that kind of catches you up to a lot of the different things that we've been working on, a few things that'll still get updated. Um, but wanted to spend some time chatting about the outdoor recreation plan requirements here and thinking about what the document is that we need to, that we're gonna shooting to develop um, through this process. And if you spent any time looking at the 1995 plan, it does speak to all of these requirements that the DNR has, has laid out. And so it's really in four sections of the physical and social description of the region, an inventory of natural resources and facilities, the needs assessment, which is that, that core component, and then the recommendations that come out of the needs assessment, I'll talk about what happens in each of these, but again, we need to have these four components to be compliant with what the DNR wants to see to be eligible for grant funding. The component of that is they, they ask for a five-year horizon, which is what your current 1995 plan was set for 95 to 2000, um, and that's really what the DNR is, has their laser focus on. We need to remember as this process that we need to respond to that requirement, but we're, we want to create a plan that's going beyond the next five years. Um, so when we're thinking about um, what that means in terms of these requirements, we'll be thinking about them a little differently, but we need to be thinking with that five-year lens, but also beyond five years and what that looks like. So um, we've got the four requirements in here. Obviously, there's current conditions as well. But when we think about our needs assessment, again, we need to, what are our needs for the next five years and what are our, our needs beyond that five year? And what does that mean for recommendations? Obviously, the recommendations particularly are gonna look different between what's needed in five years and what's needed in the, the five years beyond. The hope is that with this, this thought process is the, the vision and the overall assessment that we establish through this plan when it comes to five years and you need to update this to keep the plan current with DNR standards, 
you've already got all of that framework in place from this process. So it's a much easier process for keeping your outdoor restoration <coughs> plan consistent with DNR standards. So you're not missing a beat when you want to be applying for that grant funding as well. Any questions or comments on kind of that five year versus five plus year? But hopefully that kind of makes sense. I mean, is it five years in this planning process? But you're projecting your planning for 20, 25 years. Is that kind of what you? Yeah. So we're we're planning here today in 2022. The DNR says our require our plan horizon or what we're looking for should only be five years, so the 2027. But we are going to plan beyond. Like the comp plan is going out 20 years. We're thinking beyond 2027 as well. But we need to hit both of those benchmarks. And the outdoor rec plan is only is it to be required to be updated every 20? They, every oh, five. Every five. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the hope is that you have that that longer term framework that is going to be a little higher level because again we're trying to project out 20 years but that you have the specific recommendations that will guide you for the next five. But when you're at 2027 and you need to update it, you could probably keep that 20 year framework or make some minor tweaks to it. So it makes your update process a lot easier. So I, this inventory of natural resources and facilities and um, the plan requirement would be current conditions, but it doesn't get updated to five and five plus years. It just is static at where we are now yeah so that's where we get into the needs assessment and recommendation so our inventory is what do we have here today in 2022 okay. when you update the plan to 2027 you need to update that with what you have in 2027 okay yeah okay and we'll get into a little bit of what these each require here so the first requirement is our physical and social description of the region, and this is essentially our existing condition section. So a good chunk of what we need for this section, we've already put together here in terms of just our general population numbers, our age, our ethnic background. We've already got that information pulled together. And this is again, just that understanding of, of where we are today, but then also the social character, the physical characteristics. We need to talk about what our soil composition is and our climate and some of those standard components that obviously affect recreation. We do need to talk about projections in this piece. So if we go back here, and I forgot to add it, um, but we will be looking at this grander projection of that 22,513, but what is our five-year projection? Those are going to be two key numbers for this process that we will build our needs assessment from. Again, it's a planning tool. If we don't hit them, we don't hit them. Um, but that's going to be our benchmark for what we're we're looking to make sure that we have the recreation system in place for those 22,000 people in 2035. That would be hit on um, in this kind of what that what those projections are in this section of the document. Um, and then we get into our inventory of natural resources and facilities. And again, this is saying celebrating and highlighting all of the great stuff that we have in the community today. So we've started with the 2009 inventory that you guys did, which is a great starting point for us. Now that the snow is gone, we're going to get out and do some field confirmation of a few things. Your resource, or the 2009 inventory was really great for telling us that there was a baseball field or maybe multiple baseball fields there was benches we don't know how many for dnr requirements we need to be a little bit more specific of how many of those different activity or elements are out there so that's the next piece we need to do obviously there's also been some changes since 2009 so there were some parks that weren't included in your 2009 document for example that need to get added and updated so we've started to do that but need one we'll confirm that in a field visit here in the next couple of weeks but what's required from the DNR, we need to talk about not only the recreation facilities, but also our natural resources. So when the DNR is looking at outdoor recreation, they are taking that beyond our specific park facilities and that just what is out there from a natural resources perspective. We also do need to talk about ADA accessibility in here. It's not, there's not really rigid requirements, but we need to talk about what's, what's in place in the community now and what we're working on you know, those kinds of things. 
Um, so I won't go deep into here because you guys probably know more than than I do. But um, you know, what are the different parks that we have? Categorizing them and kind of the the resources that they provide to the community. These the community park neighborhood park, special use park, and linear park are the terminal is the terminology that you use in the 2009 inventory. So hopefully that's not anything new, but is also common terminology that's used in um, in this type of plan. But then also looking at the different types of resources and facilities. So this is again using the categories that you used in your 2009 inventory as well about just you know our field sports versus court sports and play equipment and miscellaneous activities and different amenities this is what will all be confirmed in terms of the actual number of what's out there through our inventory so as a result um, and what gets included in this document will be a holistic table that has all of your parks all of the different amenities what's located where kind of matching a little bit of what your parks map has on it now but even going beyond that in terms of what the facilities and resources are that we have available. So um, just kind of starting um, to identify a couple of those different inventory components there. And that really is going to inform our, our needs assessment overall. And this is where I wanted to spend a little bit more time chatting with you all. This is the first part of this is just kind of letting you know what's out there. Um, but from a needs assessment perspective, we have two ways that we can look with well, three ways kind of, but there's two, two forms of the assessment that the DNR allows. The first is the public input assessment. So you could do the assessment. So our needs assessment is going to say, what do we need to do to our recreation system to, make, to, to provide the facilities that we need to support that population growth that we're going to see. You could do that by only engaging the community. So having different events and saying, you know, Kendra, what do you want to see? Cindy, what do you want to see? Okay, they agree on this. We need, they both want a dog park. We need a bubble water dog park. That is the way that you could do the assessment. The other version of that is based on um, need standards from the NRPA, which is more of that quantitative assessment. So they go through and look at what all of the a lot of different recreation systems throughout the nation are doing and setting some standards based on different population metrics um different municipality types of things like that that can say you know so that you need for every five thousand people you need one baseball field or every ten thousand people you need a pool um and so it's a much more quantitative component um for how to look at it you could do them one way or the other, it is recommended that they be done together and kind of doing a hybrid. And that is the approach that we would recommend as well. Obviously, public engagement is important and there are some different components that might come out of this. Um, and a lot of times there's a regional component that comes to it. A community, for other um, outdoor recreation plans that we've done, a community center or community facility space was really highlighted through public engagement. But I think the standards at the time were like 30,000 people you needed to have a community center or something like that, which depending on where your regional location is, if you have to otherwise drive, you know, a far distance to even hit that 30,000 people, that might quantify them identifying a community, you know, community center through the public input um, assessment piece of that. So am I missing anything in the overview of that? Did I? Okay. Any questions on kind of that comparison or why we would kind of do a combo of the two? Well, it just occurs to me that New Richmond has a fabulous community center and they're nowhere near 30,000 people. So is that something the community said, this is what we want and we need a place for our kids to go in the wintertime and rainy days? And yes. Yeah. So I, the, the one thing I would say is that that combination for us in this outdoor recreation plan, because you can do whatever you want. You don't need to have an outdoor recreation plan to do and invest in anything. What this plan does is A, gives you the guidance and working with your council to say, hey, we should really invest in X, Y, and Z. But if you wanted to go to the DNR to request a grant to help construct that community center, we would want to make sure that the needs assessment, whether that was through, you know, showing that meant that, that we met that, that 
criteria for the number of people or that it was everyone that we talked to through public engagement said we need a community center. Making that point, showing that point to the DNR when we ask for funding through a grant is where that connection needs to be. So it doesn't mean that you have to meet that standard, otherwise there's just a few criteria more from the grant perspective. Okay. That and money from somebody because the Richmond one came from uh, a donor. Yeah. So, I mean. Yeah. <laughs> and anyway. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to dive a little deeper into that needs assessment on the quantitative side from the NRPA, which is um, gets into a few different ways of looking at things. And I won't bore you. This is I well, Amy, I start to nerd out when I get to dive into these and I've got my Excel spreadsheet out and I'm getting excited. I won't got dive deep into things, but I think there are some interesting points as we've started to look at things that I wanted to highlight here. <laughs> so when the their framework for the needs assessment, you can look at what's needed in the community based on a number of factors there on the left. So what your overall population is, um, how many parks you already have in the community, um, the population per square mile, things like that are all factors that can be looked at um, and used as your metrics to run this analysis. And then on the right hand side of the screen is where River Falls falls into. The different categories there. So there's, um, you know, from a population standpoint, they have less than 20,000, and they have 20,000 to 60,000, 60,000 to 120, whatever. I don't know the numbers for sure. But so if the part that was interesting for me is that, well, from a population standpoint and a full time employee standpoint, we were on the low end of, of the spectrum here. But when it gets into um, the um, the acre of parkland or the number of parks or even your parks budget, you're on the higher end of the spectrum there. So I think that was something for me that was exciting and something that we should celebrate is just showing by looking at how, what numbers we would use that we're already showing that there's great resources and availability of these to what the, community, the size of the community to start with. So we should all we should all applaud yourselves. So um, our park budget is between one to five million dollars. That's what I found in the 2022 budget when I pulled it up. So okay. yeah, that number really jumped out to me because I've never seen it uh, anywhere near one to five million. So well, I, maybe I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't question that if that okay. includes maybe capital contributions like the Glen Park project budget. Would Maybe. definitely have okay. pushed that over, but okay. our operational budget is is not <laughs> <laughs> I'll double check. Yeah. I maybe looked at it too quickly. So good to know. That's why we're chatting about things. So okay. Um, but then as so then going to that next step of looking at the different measures. So there's lots of different things that we can look at in terms of like the miles of trails or um, residents per park or even getting into again what what different facilities we all need. So to, to really start us off, um, we've got a couple of first factors of our residents per park and the acres of parkland per thousand residents. And so that 2022 condition, it was um, is just what we have now based on our 2020 so our 2020 population from the census and parks numbers that NRPA assessment range takes all of those different factors on the left. I did admittedly use the one to five million budget, so that's maybe a little different there, but um, that range of what's saying it's acceptable for a community that in those categories that we fall in and then um, what that difference is. So I think the great part to show here is that we have less par people per park, we have more parks per people, so however you want to phrase that, than what the standards are. So we're doing well in that standpoint, and we also have more parkland per thousand people than what the standard is saying that we need to be. So that's, you know, again, celebrating the good things we have there. This is, again, our current conditions. We will need to be looking at what our population projections are going to be and seeing what our differences are and do we need to be adding additional parks or park acreage to the system to make sure we're keeping up with the standard there. Um, and just some, you know, looking at more specifically the park amenities, 
Right now, um, based on some quick numbers, we have an overabundance of adult baseball fields, but we're low on youth baseball fields. Part of that might be, I don't have them categorized correctly on youth versus adult. <laughs> That we we're not we don't quite need more multi-purpose fields, but you know we're we're probably in the future going to be over that whole number of um, need of need, and then apparently we have lots of extra playgrounds um, <laughs> than what the standard calls out there on average. But maybe and we're adding to that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but they're highlighted a lot, so that I mean that's a good thing. So. Um, well, I'll take that number off when we show it to administration. But no. <laughs> um, oops, I'm stuck on computer there. So, um, I get. I, I just wanted to highlight this process for you all to understand. We don't. We're not going to get you involved in necessarily the inner workings, but you will see the results of this. So I wanted to give an understanding of what we're looking at. Um, today and how it will be used moving forward. I think the way that we're looking at this in terms of the hybrid between the two is we have some understanding of what people based on the early input we're seeing of what, what they'd like to see, you know, the mentions of the pool and improved trails and sidewalks, but we'll run the needs assessment based on the numbers to say, based from a pure number standpoint, take any feelings out of it. This is what we need. How does that compare to the input that we're receiving and balancing it out and having a conversation with all of you to confirm what our needs are across these two assessment typologies when we put together our full list of recommendations. Does that make sense? Okay. So then the final piece here, um, so this we're, we're looking a little ways down the road here yet, but is um, identifying an action plan. So what, what are our recommendations? What are we saying that we need to do over the next five years? Over the next five plus years, we can't forget about operations and maintenance. You could plan all the new things that you want to do, but you have to maintain what you have. So balancing the new versus the maintenance component, and then looking specifically at funding programs. So they are, um, from a grant eligibility standpoint, we want to understand what our current funding structure and availability is, and then identifying what other grant funding programs might be out there. This is probably ever, there's more grant funding and goofy things all over the place right now. So this will probably be a harder section for us than it's been in past plans, just because there's a lot more stuff floating around. Unfortunately, it's more competitive than ever as well, but um, wanting to highlight some of those things. And again, that's a resource for all of you um, as you're um, looking to implement the plan as well. So that's really kind of a... So as a steering committee, are we going to have some decision making? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So from an overall process standpoint, like I said, we're going to confirm that inventory with all of you. It would be our intention. I don't think we'll need to meet in April. Um, we won't have the, you know, much that we'll need to talk through at that point, but the intent would be that we would have that inventory matrix for you all to take a look at, but we, we don't need to spend a whole meeting, um, you know. Confirming. Oh, you forgot this one. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We can get that We can get that through email conversations or a phone call or things like that. But then from there, that's really gonna set our standards for us moving forward so that we can be running those assessments and saying where we, we need to be. So when we're really making decisions, it's we've gone in and done some of that analysis and can kind of, so we'll have this inventory matrix. We'll know parks and benches and different areas of mm -hmm. the city. We'll have a good understanding of that. Then we'll have the community input from the open house and from the surveys. Yep. And then I'm guessing we'll have start putting together some ideas and then through the summer having these pop-up events. Exactly. We can maybe test our ideas. And if people are going, no, mm -hmm. or they go skate park. Right. <laughs> like, oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly right. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. So those pop up opportunities really provide us a way to utilize the needs assessment or just building off of what we've already heard to either confirm, you know, what we're hearing or get some more ideas that maybe we hadn't otherwise heard of. Now, sometimes are, are the school's playgrounds counted within those playgrounds? And they, the 
They that's are, but in a different, okay. we need to identify schools. Right. And I haven't looked yet, but if, I don't know that there are any private parks. We need to say that they're in the community, but they're not accessible is the one. So there's just, it's a little, mm -hmm. it's a right. fuzzy gray. Area, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So the last piece, I've done a lot of talking, so now I want you guys all to talk, um, is thinking about our, our key themes and goals and really what um, in this structure, we need to be thinking about goals of where we're, what do we want to be, what do we want to have out of a recreation system over the next five years, over the next 20 years. Um, and you'll notice that goals aren't necessarily something specific that was called out in the DNR's requirements for what needs to be in this plan. But from our perspective, having some longer range goals are what's going to make this plan a usable tool beyond the next five years. Um, and so our goals are really our, our desired outcome, where we want to be going or outlook for decisions to be made upon. I think what would be what the, our goal overall for this process is to have goals in a plan that you as a committee, as you're making decisions, or taking actions on things in the future, you can look back at your outdoor recreation plan and say, yes, you should do this because it was identified in this plan or this supports the goal that we established through this process. So when we're thinking about what those goal statements are, we wanna make sure that they're things that you all can connect with, that the public is going to connect with um, and that are gonna be usable in terms of future decision-making. So we need them to be broad enough that they can apply and withstand uh, withstand some time, but they're also specific enough so you can make decisions from them. This will, that overall goal theme is the same for the bike and pedestrian plan and the comprehensive plan um, as well. So, but we could sit here and create goal statements together, but trust me, that would be a pretty arduous process. Um, for us to try to craft statements all together. So for us, we like to take it a step back and think about what we've coined as key themes. Um, and they are really more of our, our themes or directions that we, we should be building from. So thinking about the input that we received and went over from the open house, what we received thus far, or just your knowledge of the community and the recreation system, what are some of the themes that we need to be focusing on that we can take back and start crafting goal statements on for you all to react to. So it's our way of having a discussion of what those themes or what those themes are to give us direction to inform goals. I didn't apologize, I forgot to print off the agenda, but our agenda did include the 1995 mission statement and goals. Um, from the current plan. Um, this is the, I won't read it because it's long. They, they got it. Oh, okay, okay, okay perfect. Um, so this is the mission statement that was included and the goal statements um, were included in there. They're pretty generic in the sense of, but they're, and they're generic, they're good. They're saying things that we need to, but they're not super directive or, you know, it's, we want to engage the community. Great. What do we want to engage the community to do? What are we trying to get out of that? Some of those things. So just wanting to give that kind of framework for where, what we're building from, and 1995 was a while ago, um, but knowing what, what was currently in, or what was in that plan, just so you're aware. But so now I want to stop talking and have you all give me some insight. Again, this is a place where no idea is a bad idea, but we want to understand what are some key themes, those concerns, those barriers or challenges that the plan should tackle. Really, what, what should we be setting our goals to do or what are those focus areas that we need to be building goals upon? I started to write some things up here to kind of give you a framework for the, this, might, this will probably be a little bit easier for the Comprehensive Plan Steering Committee because they get to think about buckets like housing and land use and transportation. It's a little easier to kind of laser focus there. But so um, for me, it's also thinking about, you know, our existing facilities, our new facilities. What do we want to see, whether that's, you know, new parks or new facilities within existing parks, and also thinking about that ever important component of maintenance and operations that, that we can't forget about what we have and maintaining what we have. So there may be other buckets or things 
but I'll pause there and hopefully that this exercise makes sense, but let me know if I need to clarify further. But. Well, I, um, I don't know if it fits in all of this and I value all populations, but I think I'm going to be one who advocates more for the seniors. And so I'm glad to see you have some ADA ideas in here because some of the things that keep a senior in their house is they just don't feel comfortable going out. They're afraid of broken um, sidewalks and or dogs or children running when they're trying to you know, navigate a, a narrow um, pathway or something like that, but they will get out. Mm -hmm. And to Trisha's point, um, I think we should consider snail mail because not everybody is going to look in their email for when we try to engage with them. And many people who have email, they ignore it because they get so much stuff sent there. Yeah. And, you know, so we know there's missing. Yeah, we know we have a missing demographic that naturally will skip yeah. their email or just doesn't use it. Well, and and everyone needs to realize if you have a computer, if you're operating only on computer understanding, that means the person has to have Comcast. So it's not just a matter. Of, I have a computer. Well, yeah, I have a computer. I can do a Word document. But you have to pay. You have to be paying a hundred, two hundred dollars a month to be able to maintain, and then you have to be able to maintain because, like, if I didn't have Brian, I just go out with it. <laughs> I think if you're, I think the river in a lot of the refer, you know, the green space the river provides, you know, through the DNR. I mean, I think there's a lot of potential for the future. And I think even if the city grows in ways, I think that provides some stability there that um, there's always kind of some recreation to build around. But, um, you know, if you're projecting out to 2045 or like, you know, future growth, if we're getting up there in those numbers, I, I think connecting some of these green spaces would be a major concern or, or barrier, like to be able to go from this area out towards, you know, I just, I would love if, and I don't know the history of River Falls, but to me, all that green space just sitting north here of Division um, and along the river, you know, it seems like if you could, and I'm sure there's people here that know, but if you could have a trail that went that way and went out and you could connect some of these green spaces, it seemed like- End up at Tanner Saw. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just say we're in Aloha. <laughs> from there. But I mean, just that you can keep going, connecting, you know, a little further without getting yeah. on the streets and stuff. And I know that's outside of, that's kind of a community biking thing, but that would be good. I have to run to another meeting. I've never, I'm sorry if I, is that boss? Is that yeah. in the protocol? I'm You're sorry. Right. <laughs> Thank you. Though. Thank you. So in, in the next point, yep. um, identifying the hurdles that would uh, get in our way from doing mm -hmm. the connections that we want. Yep. But then you get back into the maintenance of all this, and assuming you have a higher population, you've got to better tax base, but um, you know, we have to maintain the buckthorn. It doesn't help to have a trail if the buckthorn mm -hmm. is, is uh, coming over if you don't have places to stop and go to the bathroom or a drinking fountain. Um, all those things kind of feed into, you can say I want 20 miles of trails, but you, you've got to maintain that. I think for I like where your guys' head is going, but I think you're one step ahead of where I'm trying to be right now from the goals perspective. Let's okay. think about what we want to see, not how we're going to get it done. Um, try to, and that's a really hard thing to do, but we'll get there because we'll go through this goal thing and you know, go through the goal development of goals and Thank figure you. out that things we can't do those things. But let's let's try to be optimistic and okay. So well, then yeah. take off maintenance and operations, because that's what gets to me. <laughs> and I know when I put in a new deck, now all of a sudden I have to stain it. And I have yeah. to... <laughs> <laughs>
So again, thinking about, you know, where we want to be, we, focusing, we heard things about pools, a pool and connected trails and different sports facilities and things like that. What are, when we're thinking about grandiose goals, thinking about what we want for the future of River Falls, what are those focus areas that we want to be? I think it goes back to like clean drinking water for natural resources. I know there's several, there's probably several other key ones too that probably go on out there with it. I do think the main one that people really want is like the community center with the indoor pool and it's got the basketball. Right. Right? I mean that is just the bells and whistles. Yeah. That's what people want. And I'm not gonna be negative. <laughs> <laughs> As to how. Yeah. Well then the museum. If we're doing wishful thinking. <laughs> oh, that's not outdoor. Never mind. I know we have like this wonderful river, but I've had a few people kind of um, asking if we're ever going to get like a trout pond or something like that little kids can go fish in. Like stock it has it sure. in our stock it. I don't I don't know how that all works, but like the one that we start for. Yes, there's some really nice ones around that. Um, I know we have the river, but it's Maybe little kid, it's hard to think. Would ongoing projects like mm -hmm. getting an ice rink and you know, like Glen Park, like we originally had our plan, be part of that? Then? Mm -hmm. Yep. I'm going to put that under existing because they're sorry. How about sculptures and art in that city? And I don't know if I put that under existing because we don't have um, that up right now. The ice rink? Right. Yes, I only put it there because there's planning that's gone okay. into it. So, okay, thank you. Yeah. How about from an existing facilities standpoint, thinking about, you know, growing to build an ice rink or some of those things? What are what are some of the things you think that people would want? Changes in Hop, changes in Glen, changes in the new Sterling Ponds Park. Are there deficiencies or things that from the existing parks that we have that are really things that we need to be thinking about in terms of our existing facilities? Well, Sterling Ponds needs a, a shelter. Um, I don't know if they have a water fountain out there. Okay. Um, bathrooms. And, and does does that make a difference on how big the park is? Because you know, typically, and I don't, I don't know, maybe the national is different, but a neighborhood park necessarily wouldn't have bathrooms. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Because I, I now Sterling Ponds is, is, you know, of course we're adding some aggregate. It's it's getting bigger, but is that still categorized as neighborhood park? Yes. Yes. But the Sanctus Park, we can't have bathrooms there. We talked about that last week, and that's one of our bigger parks. I don't think there's one out by the Whitetail Ridge. Um, it's in the planning. It's in the planning. There you go. <laughs> this isn't necessarily facilities, but just the accessibility to get from one place to another. So mm -hmm. that would obviously be connecting trails, safe routes to parks, safe routes to. Yeah. Your facilities categorization is throwing me off a little bit. Yeah, I really like that little tunnel from High Ridge where you can get down to get to Hoffman Park. And I think uh, the Sanctus Park would do well to have some kind of a bridge or tunnel to get from the other. Yeah, without the kids having to cross the road. I guess I'd mention uh, pet friendly and pet responsible both. Okay. Like that, so.
Uh, all right, what I've been thinking of, uh, I don't know if it's exactly along the lines. That's why I've kind right. of haven't said anything, but with a plan like this, um, what does it do? What does it have that's inherent to the system that would combat cycles or change in the community other than a five year assessment? Meaning uh, uh, tennis ball courts, right? Mm -hmm. it, no one uses them anymore. We turn them all into pickleball courts. Right. Three years from now, community comes out and says we want tennis ball courts. Or to be a more accurate one would be like the ice rink. When I first got on park board, one of the things they were dealing with was getting rid of the boards around Hoffman Park. And then it was quiet for a while. And now for the last three or four years, I've heard nothing about the number one thing that we need in River Falls is an ice rink. And what, what perplexes me is where were all these people when we said we, we, nobody wants it? Another one, another good example would be like the, the skate rink. Um, I don't know if we're exactly hearing that we don't want one and now we want one, or is it more that we don't want the one we have? Sure. So, yeah, yeah. And, and, and so then I look at the 1995-2000 the plan goals that are, like you said, are kind of generic and they don't give a lot of direction, but, you know, I look at number eight, and eight is operate efficiently and effectively. So what is it that's going to be in this plan that can really get in front? Because it gets expensive. I mean, we can't put in a, we can't put in a, a new pool that's like $4 million dollars and then, uh, you know, not use it. I mean, I'm over exaggerating. Right. But as I say this, I'm kind of thinking of ways that I'm answering my own question because the better we do with the information gathering, but that can only do so much, right? right? Yeah. So I guess uh, I would be, yeah, again, I know it's not exactly, but when I see key concerns and barriers, that's kind of a, that's kind of a key concern to me. Yeah. I don't know what that would fall under, but, you know, you can't please everybody. Mm -hmm. But... I don't want to see, you know, again, this ice rink idea. Like, I'm, I'm not opposed to it, right? But, but these cycles, this, this, what's the, what's the current most important thing? For, for sure. You know. Yep. So what? I guess, I guess, to bring it together is what can we do to combat that to really get a strong focus mm -hmm. so that we're not just constantly chasing our tail. Right. So I wrote down flexibility because I think that's the important component in any long range planning that we're doing. It's also recognition that this isn't the, the be all end all written in stone document that it's intended to, to serve as a guide for you. There's some you know things we want to have in there so that when you're going to get grant, fund, grant funding, there's the, the meat that's in there to make sure that you can be eligible for that funding, but that it also has enough flexibility for you all to be able to make your decisions upon as you're, you know, updating your CIP and planning for what, you know, we've got some additional funds. Let's look and we can look at X, Y, and Z with some tools for analyzing what, what you might consider when you have those available funds or what you'd be tackling. Um, I think the, it's pretty, you can look at the, the standards that we'd be looking at and they have it for every single different facility type that's out there. Just because there's a standard for tennis courts, if the tennis courts aren't being used and we don't see that as, you know, and as a need for investment in the community, we don't have to talk about it here. So that will be part of the discussion that we need to have together here as we're looking at that needs analysis of saying, it may say that we need, you know, five new tennis courts, but the two tennis courts we have aren't even being used, then we are not going to include that as a recommendation. There's no nothing that says that we have to, you know, that because we are a Midwest Wisconsin community that we have to have resources of all these types. We have the ability to tailor that to what makes sense for River Falls. I think it's really important to think about those cycles too. And that's where for me it's a little bit beyond the five year component, because yes, five things will things will change in five years, but it's hard to navigate change in that small amount of time. But um, we're working in another community where people are very upset about how much people are playing soccer. 
the cultural component of things, but their soccer fields are getting used. Maybe they're not always playing soccer. They're using them as multi-purpose facilities to use other things, but that's, it's showing a need for other things. And so thinking about that flexibility and what we're offering to and allowing for some of that change to occur, who knows, you know, who, who could ever forecast, or forecast the Pokemon Go or whatever <laughs> yeah, that was, yeah. or people were all out, who knows what the next thing <laughs> is going to be. Um, so we can't forecast all of that, but thinking about the flexibility and allowing for some of that flexibility to happen is, I guess, how I would try to answer your question. I would add too that I mean, so this last plan was done in 1995. We didn't do the five year incremental updates. That would be a great tool for this board to be able to do that, right? So then you have greater flexibility to shift or pivot at five years if you either want to mm -hmm. um, with the next new thing that's important to the community. Yeah. And I think that's important for. SRF and myself as a planning practitioner that I'm giving you something that you can you understand how to use moving forward. So what we're required to include doesn't need to be anything about how you're going to to really use it. But for us, if we can identify ways that you think you want to consider when you're going to update this or again, making this a easy to update document when you are at 2027 and you're updating it again, um, that's that's something that's very important to me because this is going to be your baby when I step away. I have a lot of babies that get adopted by other. <laughs> <laughs> I needed a few more pieces. It was getting too quiet in here. So do you, like on that existing facilities list, when we put a few items that are in plans and not implemented, do you want the rest of that list? Yes. Cool. <laughs> Sport court. That's a multi use one, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. What else do we have on the list? I thought there were more I was thinking of. Well, we do have Nature Center mm -hmm. and the Kitty Corridor Plan. We do have the Trout Pond and the Kitty Corridor Plan. We've got more trails in there that head up through the Aloha space. <laughs> um, well, on the bridge across the railroad trestles is part of the King Corridor plan. So I don't know how, how these are melding together, but. That did pop up in a couple of <coughs> comments from the open house was maintaining the bridge. And there's also in the corridor plan, I don't know if this has to do with that, of turning Elm Street into a pedestrian um, walkway with farmers markets and uh, that type of little, I don't know what you call them, little top up food trucks and whatever. Got a kayak launch in the city. Amphitheater? So, no, that's not on the CFP, but oh, what was that? Amphitheater. Yeah. Amphitheater. Yeah. What was Amphitheater. Yeah. Amphitheater. I'll give you a clue. When my handwriting gets messy, that means I don't know how to spell something. <laughs> <laughs> You're absolutely tired. <laughs> So maybe I'll conclude this by just giving you one second to think about if money was no object, what would you like to see out of our recreation system here? <laughs> all of the money. You had all of the money. Swimming pool. Yeah. The community uh, center. The community center. Swimming swimming pool. Pool. I like it. For all, for all the years. I got everything. <laughs> right. Yeah. With a swim bar. That's true. Everything and all that together. I am. Everything is me. All we need to do is win the lottery. Mm -hmm. Mine would be the green waste system. I don't know why that one. Okay. Because the swimming pool is sort of my advocacy for. 
seniors because it's something we can do sure. and not hurt our knees and ankles and <laughs> We had a in the community I live in a YMCA, which is great that closed during COVID. Oh. It's kind of open. It became a COVID testing facility and vaccination site. So that was a great amenity, but yeah. <laughs> Excellent. So this is helpful for us to kind of understand again that direction and start to craft what we want to be seeing out of goal statements. The one thing I will say about these key themes and the goal statements, we like to think about them early so we can understand the focus areas that we want to be when we go into analysis where we want to be focusing on or what we want to do for the next phases of engagement, but we may learn that these goals don't make sense or they need to be modified or tweaked because we hear more engagement or analysis tells us something different. So um, they're a good, they're a good guide for this planning process, uh, but they will be tweaked and pulled um, as we go through things. As well. So one thing I just thought of that we didn't really touch on was all of our sports organizations, mm -hmm. and I don't know that they, we didn't really touch on those, but I'm sure if the hockey folks were here, they would want a new facility, or the soccer folks were here, do they need new fields? Well, they, they want, well, they want indoor <laughs> practice spot. Um, Baseball, you know, they don't always use more baseball fields. Um, and this that would be under the, the community center would be the girls and boys basketball. Um, Does pickleball still want more courts? Oh, um, they're, they're, they're pretty happy with, you know, with the new ones that are going in at the high school. But, you know, now once again, is that in that gray area? So they would love more right where they're where they're at. We're at right now. They would love to add more. I've never played pickleball, so I maybe need to connect with your pickleball person and show them a bit like okay. we have a class for you. <laughs> Kendra, was it yesterday we were we went by Glen Park? And they had shoveled there were two guys out had shoveled off the snow and we're playing. I'm not surprised. <laughs> As long as they didn't use an ice chipper like they did last year and walk down into the. the <laughs> did you take a picture? And then I, I actually got a call from Stillwater and where they and the people had put ice melt down to last last year to sure. get those courts you know cleared off a little bit early. So, but. You know, one thing I ought to say that we should add simply is parking. Parking is somewhat limiting factor. At all of them. Yeah. I saw that right here too. Yeah. Well, and that reminds me of just golf. So we're in the process of putting new disc on our better 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, this golf, uh, I played a lot in college at the friends at Westbridge. And now my yeah. head's just going. So if Cork was here, they want more trails. Mm -hmm. we sure. Have King Alfred Cyclists. The last we have in town. So that should be on. <laughs> So to kind of wrap us up here in terms of what happens next, um, I will make my, I promise, last plug for the Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> um, but and just a reminder there that to keep an eye out for other stuff that pops up, the next phase of what's going to end up on Engage RF will likely be some more interactive components where you're able to engage or see comments that other people are posting and even like or dislike or comment on some of those things or some mapping things. So um, there'll be kind of a new phase of, of how you can engage um, with Engage RF. So exciting things to come there as well. But we'll start to plan our, our pop-up events and that's going to be a broader 
conversation as well. I think it's been really refreshing and exciting for me. Amy emailed me earlier this week that she had a resident call and wants to canvas for our planning process within her neighborhood. <laughs> Super cool. That's awesome. Um, the fact that Patricia volunteered to spend five hours with us at our open house. And loved it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's super exciting. I also didn't mention we're collaborating with a community engagement class at UWRF um, where the students are going to be crafting a survey and doing some engagement relating to our planning process as well. Um, when I was in town for the open house, I went and chatted with that class. Um, so I think that's really great because it's most likely they're going to, they have to go out and solicit input for their homework assignment and they're most likely going to connect with their friends on campus, right? So, and they're going to find out which a lot of people that they don't know exactly what all is in the city. You know, exactly. They stay there. So it's like they're, you know, they could say pick up one. We got it down there. Like what? You know? Yeah. So. yeah. Um, so that's exciting. But from the pop-up event perspective, and I will plug this, it's, um, our intent as well as we're planning the pop-ups, we've got pop-ups for this plan, but also for the comprehensive plan that we have set it up in a meeting in the box format. So if you, if Patricia decides again that she wants to go do a pop-up event with a, some group that we could have the materials there for you to pass out information to friends and family or whoever you're engaging with at the event um, as well. So I just kind of make that plug if, if you have, a group that you think would benefit from information or you know that could participate in our process we want to connect and engage as we can well just a thought there's that earth day thing rest of the lake Lone park are we having any point there okay yeah we're already connected with both okay. earth day events um okay. we've been to rotary we'll be to lines in april we've been to hope for creation um we'll be at uwrf in april how about um, preschool uh, mothers, fathers of preschoolers? It's a smaller group. Pick one of each of the posters. There's a good segue when you said the Earth Fest. Take one of each. They're different, but uh, they look very similar. But they're so swap them at the end. Oh, these really stuff coming up we already talked about the physical inventory and confirmation there and then crafting our goal statements and really getting prepped for that inventory component and kind of getting to the the nerdy planning analysis so um yeah so we'll we'll stay connected but again i we don't foresee needing to have your meet that a component of this plan for your April um, meeting. So just uh, heads up from that. Standpoint. So, well, I just want to say I have always in, enjoyed your presentations, Thank you. and it's not just your knowledge; it's your level of voice that you're talking to us, not talking at us. You pause so that if that person, I'm not afraid to jump in, but there are people who like are just waiting for a pause and, and you hear someone just, you know, like just, you know, slow down so that someone has a chance to, to put their voice in there. Um, so I really, I always appreciate, uh, and the, you always come prepared, even if you don't know how to spell amphitheater. <laughs> <laughs> What else was you know, oh, the the the, uh, the uh, renting and, and yes people. yes but now we know we've got that straightened out so but you know at any point you know you want to get maybe some feedback on something okay we started these goals you know mm -hmm. 
you know, we can ship it out to everybody before or, you know, yes. it doesn't have to be a meeting to, for yeah. people to respond. And how did like that we have the end of the month updates that we are starting to do the code of council and the planning commission packet? Did that get emailed to them? It did, did you email it to them. Okay. Yeah. So that is where the end of the month update will happen. That's where we're covering, highlighting what we all did together, and then it's your way to know what we're doing in the other two plans and also what's coming up for engagement. Um, if they're, you know. We'll have the walking and biking tour information available and stuff like that, just to keep you all in the know um, on that side as well. So, okay. Does anyone else have questions, comments? Okay, I'm looking for a motion to adjourn.